Hey guys, and welcome to FanCast. We're very grateful to be recording from the historic St Kilda Sports Club, the oldest locker room in the Southern Hemisphere. Join us on the bench where we talk all things footy. We're fans, and this is FanCast. G'day FanCasters, and welcome to another episode here on the pod where we have a proper footy chat. It's your boy, Joe, who is up and about, very jovial today for no apparent reason. I'm not going to rub it in because our other two people here on the bench are gonna, not so happy, are we, Anna? Um, I'm past the weekend, <laughs> but um, it took till today. Took till today? <laughs> well, it was yeah. fairly recent. It was just it was just on Sunday. bad is what it was. It was <laughs> very bad. bad. It is very bad. We yeah. are joined by someone who's not very bad. We're joined by an absolute legend, AJ. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, pleasure, Joe and Anna. Lovely to be here. Yay. You don't need any introduction to this place because you have been the president of this of this incredible St Kilda football sports club. Well, Not the St Kilda football club, the St Kilda sports club. club. The Bowls Club. <laughs> the Bowls. The, the Bolo. For three years and you've only recently just yeah, stepped, you know, down. stepped down. I've got my life back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look, it's I've been here 25 years. Decided to uh, finally do the presidency for three. Yep. But, yes, it's very uh, absorbing in one, uh, one's life. So, yeah, um, I know this locker room. I've spent many uh, – uh, uh, well, drunk many a bevy here, that's for sure, <laughs> as uh, all of that. But, uh, yeah, no, in a different light this tonight. For sure. In the middle between – Two so is it a row of the rose, the thorns, the, or the thorn in between the two roses? I'm um, definitely more thorny. Yeah. Or maybe two, two thorns and a rose. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> call myself a flower. <laughs> She's our rose. So, Anna, you're yeah, our rose. You're yeah. between two thorns. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the rose. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mate, we're going to, we've also got no wolves involved, though. No wolves. Or foxes. Or foxes, mm. for that matter. Yes, but. Yes. But. But. There's more. There is more. So, uh, Fox and Wolf, a little story I, 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 I wrote, um, and uh, it is a, uh, a $70 million lotto swindle uh, with uh, a couple of detectives getting involved. And uh, we do have a scene here at the Bolo, of course. Why wouldn't you? Local. Oui. Local boys. Of course. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, to tie in with tonight, obviously, uh, a game of footy. He's a uh, New York detective arrives in Australia and Detective yeah. F- Fox, the Australia, Australian, um, takes him to a game of footy. Our two teams. Yeah. Your two teams. Our, t- our team's too Wait, busy being wins? good. Who wins? Who wins? Are you uh, allowed to tell? Well. The I mean, days. <laughs> Well, I had to, you know. It's just like an, I can't <laughs> win on the park. <laughs> My mom's got to win in the story. Hey, you won a flag not too long ago, so you I wouldn't say us. I wouldn't say you're not winning you on the us park. This season, but that so. was so typical Melbourne, though, because yeah. I was three days old when we won our flag in '64. Mm-hmm. I waited 57 <laughs> years for a flag, and where was it played? You couldn't see it. Blime. Perth in Perth. That is so. That Melbourne. is so Melbourne. Mm. So Melbourne. It's so Melbourne to win, not in Melbourne. <sighs> Unfortunately, we're a cliche on a cliche, I think. <laughs> well, you do have a premiership, though. And yeah, we do. That's more than St Kilda have got. So. Of recent <laughs> times. Well, of recent times. <laughs> of recent times. Yeah. Since 1960. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. But, you know, it's, it's all right. Your time will come. Ross the boss. <laughs> the Ross the boss is <laughs> doing boss things. Yeah. I will see. Uh, <laughs> How did you find his presser after see. the game? Huh? Did you watch his presser after I the game? I did watch his presser. And I actually, what I enjoyed about the presser was that um, he said something that I said in a podcast like, two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I said that um, I wasn't af- ever afraid of the competition. I'm only ever afraid of ourselves. Right. You know, and, and uh, he said, our biggest opponent is ourselves, which means he listens to that podcast. So thanks, Ross, for the shout out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. See? But yeah, he, but maybe that's just the way it is in footy. Just the way it is in footy. Your biggest opponent is yourself. It's true. Uh, we, we've seen so much um, mental demons, how much of this game is played between the ears, <laughs> between the shoulders. <laughs> and if you're off the game, I don't want to quote Brad Scott, but like, like the competition's on a knife's edge. He says it all the time. And you see it. If you're off by a little bit, another team can come in there and absolutely knock you off the perch, even mid-game. This was the round where we've had quite a few teams come from behind uh, and get some wins. I know my team 
We came back from behind against Fremantle. I know the Giants came back from behind against the Hawks. Mm-hmm. I tipped the Hawks and the Hawks let me down. Classic Hawthorne. Yeah, is it an edge or is it a ledge at this point? <laughs> I think it's a double, double edged sword. I, I think we've double already sword. the D's have already jumped a little edge. You, you jumped a couple of weeks ago, but, yeah, exactly. uh, and we're just teasing. Yeah. We're just doing a little bit of oh, You're am dancing. I off? Am I off? Am I not off? And just, one foot off. One foot off. Yeah. Uh, they love yeah. to tease me, the bombers. Honestly, like it's it's. What would you rather? Would you rather have your season done and dusted, and you know, all right. We're looking forward to next year. No. It's all about development. It's all about improvement. Play the kids. Or would you rather be in this interesting state of limbo where you're almost sure that the Gold Coast Suns are going to come down here and win their first <laughs> game away from home just to get us, knock us off our perch yet again after that incredible one-point win? What would you rather? Have you on, be on the edge of your seat or...? I well, mean, I'm a St Kilda supporter, so I'm used to just never knowing what's going to happen. Oh, I'm I'm just sticking with that. Yeah, well, as a D supporter this time around, after going straight sets in the last two years in the <laughs> finals, it's <laughs> like, mm, do I take September off? It kind of feels all right, you know. It's yeah. just like the pressure. Yeah, it's but it still would be nice to have a glimmer, even though technically or mathematically we could still make it. But let's face it. It ain't happening. This is mm. like the one year where no one should have plans for September because <laughs> literally anybody could get in there. And they're wild carding, are they? No, they're not going to wild card this year. You don't think so? No. I if they know. wild card this year. I think they are. If they wild they card this year, this might be the chance that we get. Redemption. To, just to make us even more terrified as Essendon <laughs> supporters. <laughs> just, to, just to add us an extra round of, tra- of trauma. Yeah. Because it, uh, all, of our heart, uh, all of our collective hearts are in our mouths at the moment. But um, there's a lot of teams feeling that way. Yeah, I know the Hawks definitely. Hawks supporters know Steve, you're watching this. Um, he, he would have had his heart in his mouth. And there was another Carlton. repeat once again. Carlton, mate, Mitch McGovern had his heart in his mouth. Um, and something else too, apparently. So he was doing absolutely. Yeah, that was that was a terrible shot on goal. But um, the, it, it's just, it's so tense at the tensor right now, and that might be part of the reason why a couple of legends have decided. You know what? We're done with this season. We're going to retire. <laughs> I don't know if that's why, but maybe maybe the pressure is too much. Well, I don't think the Tigers have got too much pressure going on at the moment, <laughs> no, have they? I think Geelong <laughs> no. really don't either, uh, do they? Well, they're sort of coasting along, aren't they? But yeah, almost lost to the Crows on the weekend. It was only yeah. five points. Well, the the old GMBAH stadium Alphabet. or whatever it is, the, yeah, Alphabet, the Alphabet, Alphabet, stadium. Alphabet Stadium, it's used to be a stronghold, but it ain't so much anymore. No. Just how scary is Jezza, though? Like, oh. It's just scary. Yeah. Because if he's flying high that day, you are yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's it's over. That's He's such a hard matchup. Yeah. He is a really hard matchup. Definitely one of the best forwards in the comp, and he can actually punish you, unlike other key forwards who might have many opportunities to ice the game <laughs> um, and just kick death by a thousand cuts in your game. Oh, oh, Jamara. Uh, oh, Jamara. Yeah. Well, you know, look, if he'd kicked straight, he should have had eight on the board. Yeah. He got two six, but uh, yeah, look. When, when you're having uh, 27 more shots at goal than you, you then there's something wrong. Mm. Um, but, yeah, should have been a 100-plus belting. But only 51. Only 51. Only half only as 51. bad. Yeah. It's well, not too bad. Yeah. Better than the Swans. Yeah. Well, the Swans. Oh. The Swans wish they lost the by 51. Game. They have the worst game of the weekend. Yep. Um, yeah. No I, one I worse. don't even – I'm just speechless. I don't have anything to say. That was unreal. Just, well, you look at the scoreboard. We'd, well, you look. We'd check my phone at three quarter time. I was uh, at uh, out somewhere, and uh, I went, "That can't be right. <laughs> that's that's ridiculous." <laughs> you know, uh, top side against third side. <laughs> I was at the Carlton Collingwood game, and even there, everyone kept picking up the phone to see what was happening because they were like, "What's going on with the Swans?" Yeah, that was unreal. I thought maybe they just didn't go to Adelaide. Maybe yeah. they just stayed home. What sent the Little League? Little League, maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just looked at the score at some point in the second quarter and I saw it was 70 zip. And I'm like, this is a great inning so far. Well done. Um, no, no outs, uh, 70 runs so far. That's not too bad. I wasn't sure if we were actually watching a game of football or if we're turning to cricket some, somewhere along the way because there was no way that anyone could have possibly have predicted or foreseen that the Swans, 
who have been in a slump. We've called them the slumping swans here, right? Mm-hmm. But And I did tip them on the weekend. So I was very happy that I got the tip correct. But never in my wildest dreams would, I, would we have possibly have imagined that the number one team, a contender, everyone's favorite for the flag for so much of this season. You got to put a line. Th- can, do you put a line through them now as genuine no. contenders? No. It's oh, no. You wouldn't. Even though it was 112 points. 112 points is it was not nothing. a lot, but, yeah, they, they, they've got to get their, their mind back on the job, I think. Sometimes I think, though, I think a loss like that is a psychological loss. Mm. I don't think it's a talent loss. I don't think it's a skill loss. I think it's psychology. And it looks sometimes it makes it look worse than it is. Like if you're losing by that many points, clearly your head's not in it. If you put your head in it the next week, does it get better? I'm sure it does. So it just depends on how that coach is handling that game. I think that makes all the difference. If, yeah. if they've got a good culture, and then they can come correct next week. Um, but if, if the coach doesn't have the right words. Then it's the bloods it culture, though, right? Yeah. It's the bloods, like the, the culture's never been a, an issue for the, for the Swans. Well, then they'll be fine. But you look at the. But it's not just that one game in isolation, though, is it? Mm-mm. It's it, we, We're going back all the way to round 16. They lose to Fremantle by one. They lose to St. Kilda by two. They smash North. They lose to Brisbane by two. They lose to the Dogs by 39. And then they lose to Port by 112. So in their last stretch of one, two, three, four, five, six, in the last six games, they've won one. Mm-hmm. And it was against North Melbourne. Can I ask, is that since Heaney was um, suspended? Uh, Heaney was suspended not that long ago, I don't think. I think Sydney was, I think he was, that's a good question, actually. I think it's ever since then. Wow. Wow. She's cracked the code? Yep. Possibly? Oh, I I cracked it. I think a couple of the the, the, the two... First losses, I, I think Heaney was playing, but you know, don't, you don't uh, reckon? Well, not St Kilda. I don't think we were playing Heaney. I think okay. he'd already been suspended the week before. Well, there you go. So Probably that could, that could be. No, Heaney, he got, he he got, suspended, he got suspended. He got suspended, didn't he, um, whacking um, no, St Kilda player? Yeah, was, was it, it us? No, yeah. I don't know. No, 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 he did the big uh, at Marvel Stadium. Har- was yours Harley Reid that you got suspended? We got Harley Reid suspended. <laughs> And I, I, love I still wear that We got pride. him suspended. <laughs> <laughs> this was our goal, to get him to, to get a, a star suspended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th- there you go. But I don't know. I just feel like. When did he get suspended? That's, I don't know. I've been trying to s- scroll through, but it hasn't been working for I me reckon, very easily. I reckon it was the St Kilda game. Uh, he yeah. he, he um, flicked a, um, a, a round arm. Behind him and got oh, the clip, the clip the back right. of the the backman as he was sort of falling forward. That's I can't think right. of the, the St Kilda player's correct. name. Correct. So that's correct. Well, Four well remembered, ago. AG. Well remembered. So he was part of those losses. So two losses, and then it all t- it's really turned to shit. It's really turned really bad now. Mm. They've also been missing Tom Where's Papley. This thing? How did I not remember? Papley that? is so, yeah, going to mess I, it up. I think I think um, Heaney's suspension was a problem for the mentality, uh, and I don't know if he's the same because now no. he can't win anything. So what's he playing for? Not to say that you don't want to play for the flag and all of that, course. but to have such a promising season be taken from you for that. And yes, it was. I didn't even remember that because it was it was such a benign. It was well. They they did do the appeal process they appealed, uh, yes. t- twice, I think. But yes. um, yeah, look, it, it was pretty innocuous, and you know some of the things that go on. It's correct. Mm. Anyway, there's, there's something definitely worse, but at the same time, if, if, saying that is the reason why mm. I'd say that's very disappointing. Yes, from the from the from the Swans that they would completely come off the rails this way because their one of their star players is now ineligible for the Brownlow, like. You're supposed to be the top team. You're supposed to be likened to the 2000 Essendon team. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're yeah. the one who's supposed to be a flag favourite who's just flying on top of the ladder. And for, and for your season to – I know they're still first, but if you're a, thank you, if you're a Swans fan, you, you walked away from that game last week mm. thinking, where are we? Like, oh, where yeah. are we going? You wouldn't but even know. But it could know. be a combination. Look, it was the Heaney thing, then Papley got injured, then they had other injuries. I think they – Maybe it's just also 
I think we also said this here weeks ago. You're not going to win every single game and then win the flag. Correct. You're going to have a slump. Yes. And this is bad timing. This is bad (laughs) slump. It's just really bad timing. Which I think is um, combined with a few of the injuries. Yeah. And I think, you know, I reckon you're right with the, the Heaney thing. He hasn't looked the same player mm-hmm. after that. You know, it was sort of, uh, you know, a bit, you know, he's a bit dodgy with it all, I think. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, 112 points. Even the, the Ds, we just shrug our shoulders and go, right, okay, another week. Yep. But <laughs> And swans. we were like, at least we didn't lose by 112. <laughs> 85. Well, we've got Port this week, so, you know, oh, yeah. we, we, we can, you, uh, you know, try our best. Yeah. Well, is it here yeah. or there? Uh, it is at the G Saturday night. It's here. It's uh, here. I think you guys will have a good game against Port. I think mm. it will be competitive. They yeah. could come in with a very nice inflated sense of self having yeah. done that to the Swans. Yep. And the slumping Swans. And they come down here. They've seen you guys and the performance that you dished up against the Bulldogs. And then thinking, mate, we got this. But as we mm. said before, if you come in, not mm. razor sharp, mate, mm. you're mm. gonna get dacked. I mean, that was the Saints game. I don't think we, I don't think we expected Brisbane to be that good. I really don't. I think we thought we were playing the Brisbane that we had in the middle of the year, and that was not who played that day. That's why Steve and I were really surprised with your tip. You were so confident last I was week. Sorry. I told you, I did make the disclaimer about confidence. Though. Yes, you did. <laughs> That's always what it is. But, um, yeah, I think they look probably they that was the best performing team that I have seen mm. in person at a game this yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, they're, they're certainly form team, aren't yeah. they? You know, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. looking pretty good. They're on the upswing. Mm. And, the, you know, the, the danger with Brisbane is if they finish top two and they have the home final, they'll mm-hmm. win it at the Gabatoire. They then host a prelim final over there. They're not going to lose that one either. And they're just waltzing to the grand final. I'm not for mad about that, purposes. though, because they had the last couple seasons. They came so close. They, have. they just disappointed themselves. So Correct. It would really be them overcoming adversity to, Correct. to get a flag, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, they, they do deserve a flag. I yeah. agree. And that list is performing really fading. well. <laughs> yeah, for fakes. Been there forever. He has been there for a while. Uh, but the team is gelling so well, and we're seeing the – the explosion of Cam Rayner. I think Cam mm. Rayner has absolutely just. I'm surprised we haven't seen him earlier in the year, though. That was actually mm. disappointing. Him and Charlie Cameron have just not had a great year up till now. Mm. I think Charlie, even still now, meh. Yeah, um, yeah, hasn't but been yeah, the same. Cam Rayner, I, I was expecting more from him earlier in the year, so. Good he, that he's coming. coming he certainly through. played a good game against us our first time around. He <laughs> belted us. Well, so he had 30 fun. odd touches and a couple of goals. <laughs> and yeah. So Cam Rayner is going to have a good year. But I don't think he's kind of lived up to it after that Mm-mm. so much. Um, and uh, Charlie Cameron, no, I don't think he. But you can't ever dis- dispel him, really. You know, he'll you kick know. a couple of goals uh, in a couple of minutes and all of a sudden he's back. <laughs> <laughs> the jungles are his thing. Harley. Yes, the Harley. Yes. Then the country yes. road. Oh, but yeah. I feel like we've seen more out of Cosy Pickett this year than mm. we've seen out of Charlie Cameron. And Tyson Stengel's obviously been up there. And Papley's been injured. But there's definitely been other smalls that have overtaken Charlie Cameron this week, I think, this year, I think. Oh, look. Because he can do anything, really. Uh, but he just gets so out of a game, like, you know, fades away and, you know, fluffs around for a quarter and then all of a sudden he'll do cosy stuff and chase someone down or kick a goal over his back of his head. Yeah. You know, but he fades out of games, in and out of games is his, his, his biggest problem. So, can I, Do you feel relieved to think that Melbourne aren't really in it at this point? Because I know now that – our 0.03 chance of making <laughs> finals is gone. I actually do feel like less stressed about the next three weeks. To be honest, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. Well, because, you know, we lost the last two uh, final series, straight sets, yeah. you know. So if we get in and a final, the pressure is. It's a bit like the Bombers, really, <laughs> a coming back like the to bombers, that. You know, yeah. if you get into that final and you don't win that final, then it's just another little – Brick in the wall, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, I'm yeah. all right. Zen. Zen. <laughs> but I just feel like with us, we've been shit for so long. Just embrace the shitness. Like, what's, what's this extra season of drought going to mean? The, you've already got the record of the largest drought in history. So 
Just embrace it. There's no need. To, there's no reason to feel afraid of it. There's no reason to feel pressured by it. It is what it is. And just go out there, throw caution to the wind, and try your best. And when when just when you play that carefree attacking football that we've seen, like the exciting Hawks this year, mm-hmm. anything's possible. Yeah, I think Essendon are trying their best. We are. We're not. I think you are. We did in the last ten minutes. That's for sure. I think it's just. We'll see where that goes. I don't think we've tried our best the last week, the, the last two weeks beforehand, though. Against Adelaide, that was not our best mm. by any stretch. Against you guys, that was not our best. <laughs> I think by it's any great. stretch. <laughs> all right, all right, thank you. All right, Jeez. Are you almost, you're talking as if you guys won this week. <laughs> um, That's no, all right. Our, I, our time, our time to get win. smashed against Brisbane will be in the last round. We play yeah. them up there. <clears throat> you might be fine though. You know, every weekend's been different, so who knows? But well, it's pretty random for the tipping. Mm. Oh, tipping is my, uh, yeah. <laughs> what a nightmare! Last week, I always go to the, I always go to the <laughs> card with confidence. I'm like, I did good this week, and then when I show up and I see the results, I'm like, wow. I had no idea what was happening. No I thought I did well. I did really well with the tips last week. I, did I got not. six out of nine. I but I I'm willing four. to say that it was good because the three I got wrong were wrong by a collective mm. six points. I was right about North, good. which made me happy. And that yes. was actually a fun game to watch. It was the fun to watch. Fun. And that hanger, I was going to give a legend. One, I have two legends, but one, Fair enough. one was to um, Zuzma. Mm. That hanger was almost as good as Jamie Elliott's. It was very know, good. On par, on par. And it was awesome. Yeah. Good, good stuff. It was really good stuff. Yeah, the North, North, it's fun to watch North play. Yeah. They're playing with that young enthusiasm, the exuberance. And I mean, it's expected, right? They are a young team. Yeah. And they've been playing really well. And Tristan Sherry. Man, Tristan Sherry's really doing all he can to cement himself in that all the Australian com- conversation. He's a good unit. Mm. He's a really good yeah. unit. Yeah. 25 years old. Yeah, you may get the all Australian. And, and they look, they won that game well on accuracy. We were talking, you know, the whole points and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, the Tigers had seven more shots and yeah. lost yeah. by 10 points. I know? actually wonder, and I don't know if it's true, if Nick Larky is the most accurate shot at goal. I think he is. I think he might be the most accurate kicker. In well, Nick what Nick was goal. it, five straight? Oh, maybe, but he's yeah. like that every game. Yeah, I, right. I, I don't, I can't even remember when I've seen him miss a shot. To be honest, I think I mentioned this on the pod maybe like two, three months ago. Did you about how <laughs> this guy just genuinely might be Amazing. the number one most accurate key forward yes. in the history of the game? I think you might be right, though. I think he might be. I, I really haven't seen it from anyone else. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. And the quirk, the way he does it, like he aims. The amount of power in his kick yeah. based on how far he is. And the ball just yeah. manages to little, just land over the line everywhere he goes. And that in and of itself is also an extra degree of difficulty, just, just flexing on everybody. Not only can I get the accuracy right, I also get the power dead right as well. Yeah, if he was on a winning team, this conversation around it would be so different. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, the people wouldn't, wouldn't stop talking about it, but of course they're not. Yeah, like if he played for Melbourne. Yes, oh, yeah. well, if he did, I think we looked at him. I think we tried. I think we tried, but he's just resigned, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, he's not well, we've anyway. got something, someone not dissimilar, and that's Van Roy. Oh, he's been yeah, excellent. the root, you know, and yeah. his accuracy is good. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's built up his distance. He was good within 30, 35, and then now he's built it out to forty to fifty. So we're pretty happy with the way he's going. But For sure. um, yeah, Nick Larkey. Be nice, yeah. nice to know his numbers actually on goal point ratio. I think it's like he's got ninety four percent accuracy or something. Like that. Ooh, <laughs> okay, I wouldn't go that far. Whoa, I, I don't think whoa, it is. That, that, that I think, I think, I think he's eighty nine. I think he's. I think from memory he I'm had. I'm looking it up. He had like eighty five percent from memory when I'm I when I when I saw it a couple of months ago. I think it was eighty five percent efficiency. Okay, which uh, accuracy, which I think has him as the number one in the key in forward the in the history of the league <gasps> with oh. the way he was going. Um, but yeah, Van um, Ruin's been unreal. Oh, he's yeah. even pitching in the ruck as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, he's, yeah. he's come on right. very quickly. I Built mean, up. Scoring Built accuracy is lower than I thought it was. Oh. Would it be? It's only showing 68%. Live fact checking, ladies and gentlemen. Just Slap kidding. us in the face. <laughs> and uh, it was just a prank. 68. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Uh, uh, that seems wrong. <laughs> it fact seems check wrong. the fact yeah, checkers. Yeah, yeah, that's know. right. You know what else seems wrong? Yeah. 
the Fraud Coast Suns. Oh, no. <laughs> they lose a getaway oh. from home. I was shocked by that one. Oh. Shocked. Oh, that was shocked. awesome. I love it. And the Eagles, they also came from behind to win that game. That's right. right. Yeah. That was a gutsy win. Shocking. That I, was a gutsy win. I really feel like the Eagles beat the crap out of them. Too. They did. They did beat them up. Oh, yeah. Um, Physical. I, I think that that's probably why they didn't win that game. They just got beat up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, Dimart. You got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work and he's not, uh, you know, Will, is he getting dusty? <laughs> no. Whoa. I still say no. Yeah, I, I reckon so. he's done. Well, talking about dusty, yeah. shout out to the great man. Uh, probably the best grand final big game performer in the history of the game. Well done on an incredible career. You're almost certainly not watching this, but if somehow <laughs> this does manage to get into your feed, Nothing but love. You've broken my heart as a Bombers fan multiple times with Dreamtime Magic, but still you gotta you gotta tip your hat off to one of the yeah. absolute greats of the comp. I have to say I missed his best football days, mm. but he has retired in style. I think that that was probably the best way to retire from this game, to just randomly say it yep. and just peace out. No big last game bullshit. <laughs> Just know you're done and be done. Mm. I, I respect it a lot. Yeah. I, I really do. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think with his 300 game, you know, they had to really coax him to do the, yeah. you know, the, the media and all yeah. of that sort of thing. And he had to have the other 300 gamers around him and uh, of the Tigers. And, um, but yeah, he's just not that. He's, yeah. uh, he, he's slipped off into the sunset. But, you know, 300 odd games, three brand, uh, well, one brand low, three norms, yeah. three premierships, 300. 30 odd goals, you know, lots of threes. Lots of threes. Yeah. I think now open a tattoo parlor. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They call it hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I mean, yeah, it's classic Dusty for him to, to sort of slink out in the sunset, especially off the back of the back of the news. Also, the Tomahawk, uh, Hawkins will also be retiring at season's end. So, Another one, congratulations to the great Tomahawk. Um, but I think ultimately it just it's the fans, I think, that are going to be most disappointed that they didn't know perhaps that oh. that game on the weekend was the last time they'd see their mm. beloved Dusty go out and play. And so I'm thinking maybe, I think if he, if he was to somehow come out in the last round against the Suns, you know what He's I mean, against gonna... Dimmer Hardwick. He's not His old that. coach. It, it just. It, I think that that to me just. They're, obviously, they're no finals. The Suns aren't going to play finals either. They've lost too many games. I just feel like at that point is a nice little way just for him to go out onto the field and and I know I know it's, it's asking a lot of you because you hate the, doing the media stuff, but there are so many people out there who genuinely probably named their kid Dustin I'm because sure of him. I'm sure they'll do a farewell. I just don't think he's ever going to play. Another game before. What about the open top car sitting on the, you know, the MG yeah. around the, uh, the, the G on at the half time? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, no, the last game, I oh, thought. Yeah, game, yeah, well, that would that would be perfect, wouldn't it? It's yeah. at the G, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and please, Tom Hawkins, don't make your last game against the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough this season of, of sadness. Like, we don't need it. What are you talking about? No. I'm the one that gets PTSD every time I hear Tom Hawkins, every time I hear Tom Hawkins' name. He's, he has absolutely eviscerated the Bombers every single time we've played against him. And again, these two greats who are retiring just happened to play at the perfect time when the Bombers have been shit for so long. But congratulations on a wonderful career. Uh, he's going to go out in, in style against the West Coast Eagles at Alphabet Stadium. They're going to be handballing the ball to him every, yeah. in every option they Even can. the West Coast Eagles probably handballing <laughs> on him too. Look, get your four, Tommy. Because why? If he kicks his four, what happens? 800. 800. Oh, wow. 800 wow. goals. That's why he's playing mm. another game. He's going to oh, get Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to squeeze gonna those four that. goals out yeah, yeah, one way or another. That's right. <laughs> no, but he, he should be on so much. The, the thing about the, the Tomahawk, which needs to be said, is he's, he, he's going to score 800 if he plays the full game, hopefully. But he has given away so many. He has set up so many goals for his teammates, um, both – on the field and off the field with the salary cap, the salary cuts that he takes so that these that they can recruit other players. Honestly, Hawkins is one of the best blokes going around in football, um, one of the best teammates going around, and for that, a massive congratulations on an incredible career for the Tomahawk. Everyone, Dusty. Yeah, and to Dusty. Yep. Everyone. Yeah. And um, Dusty. 
Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, now I suppose, since we've entered into a lull, let's crack on with something that will get your minds working overtime. I've got some rapid fire questions. It's fine. And then I'll do my legend and asshole. And then you can do your legend and your asshole. Okay. <laughs> Um, I love the, I love I love the name. Of what have I got myself into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, so this is a question turn. for both of you, but one at a time. Okay. Who would you have for your All Australian ruck? Max Gorn, Chris and Cherry, or Oscar Allen? Cherry. Cherry. Yeah, Cherry. I'm gonna go Oscar. Rapid fire number two: Jamara versus Ben King. Who would be the first person to kick five goals? Jamara. Tomorrow? Yeah. I'll give him tomorrow. Or Ben I'll King? Give I'll give it a Ben. Give it a Ben? <laughs> yeah, well, as long as he's accurate. I'm just, I don't know what's yeah, going on with yeah, that it's, it's, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about these two inaccurate. Who's, who is yeah. less inaccurate, is, I guess? <laughs> give him enough chances. Percentages. <laughs> the percentages. Quickly Google it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Jamara. Number three, is Tim English worth a big contract in your mind? Is it payment mill or less? I reckon he's I worth eight, eight fifty myself. Eight fifty. Yeah. Mm. I like that number. Mm. Specific. Mm. Nice. No, and yeah, then no, he's not worth a million. Not worth a million. You agree with this? Sure. I agree to this as well. Who choked harder this week? Hawthorne, the Suns, or Fremantle? Fremantle. What was the question? Who choked harder this week? Choked Hawthorne, harder. Fremantle. It's Fremantle <laughs> or the Suns? <laughs> Got to be Freo. Yeah. Got to be. <laughs> Suck shit, Fremantle. All right, um, I'm going to say Fremantle as well. Uh, last one. Would you rather have the season be over with a month ago or be potentially teased a la Essendon style? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm okay. <clears throat> you might have already answered this mid, mid talk. Yeah, we kind of talked about this, but you yeah. said Essendon style. I don't know if one want to be teased Essendon style. That's, that's hard course I'd teasing. My, I'd want my team to be as competitive as possible the whole time. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm a D supporter, so, you know, <laughs> we've been through a lot of stress over the years. Um, but you'd always love to have a glimmer, even though we do, but not really. So you'd, you'd love to have a glimmer or just cause a bit of chaos. All right. So you should try to be the Grinch. Yeah, the Grinch. I try. I kept asking for the Grinch on the weekend, but nobody was listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one got it? <laughs> Fagan was the Grinch for you this no. week. Uh, yeah. No, it was Big O. No, yeah. Big O was the Grinch. He I absolutely mean, destroyed look, Rowan Marshmallow on the weekend. Did, but we also ha- hey, uh, <laughs> we also were on our third string midfield. And we're missing so many players that I think are underrated or under – um, not necessarily underrated, but go under the radar for their influence. Um, we had we didn't have Ryan Burns, although I don't know if that would have helped. But we didn't have Hunter Clark, who I think is really important in the middle. Seb Ross hasn't played for many, 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 many games. We didn't have Brad Crouch all year. Our midfield has been suffering. There's just not a lot of depth there, mm. so we paid the price on the weekend. That's how I see it. That's our excuse, and that's it. <laughs> It's not an excuse. Um, Having injuries is not an excuse. It is. It is when you don't have the depth. Swans. Fine, fine, example. fine, fine. Swans. Look, the Pies are going to be without Jordan Dugowie for the rest of the year. Oh, yeah, well, that's he, a problem. He didn't play the rest of the game against Carlton. He was, you know, he, he came out of the game, but they still managed to hold on and win. Yeah, but you know what? The, you saw the downturn when he left. Yeah, we did. Uh, uh and actually, so my my legend of the week is actually Patty Cripps. Nice. I have to say, I was <laughs> in that last quarter of that game. I almost felt like he was just watching the Titanic sink, and he was like, "I'm gonna take it on yep. my shoulders, yep. and I'm gonna win this game." And he yep. almost did. Um, so props to him. For, props. I, I feel bad that he's not getting you know the wins because he is really taking on a lot with that he team. He is. So oh, good on you. And has done for many years. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's been Crips and the rest. Yeah. Correct. Mm. He's yeah. an absolute brute. Now, I've got – he is an absolute lock in my – because you can make your own – you can make your own All-Australian side um, and submit it online, and there is no doubt in my mind that he is definitely going to be, at least in my team, um, when, when making the All-Australian. Really, I hope that the All-Australian selectors also put him in there because he's had an incredible season. I mean, he isn't really he in the running for the Brownlow anyway? He is. He is yeah. Got to be a chance. Yeah, I think mm. he's pretty close. 
Like him, Lockie Neal, Bontempelli. I think everyone's. Bontempelli, oh, he was I, good. Oh, I love that good. Lockie Neal gets credit for his, you know, his performances, but I think I'm tired of him and the brown logs. <laughs> put it yeah, away. I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Change of regime. Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. Please, someone different. Yeah. Gotta give it to the Bont. Give if it to the Bont. The Bont doesn't get it yeah. this year. We riot. Uh, yeah. I'm kind Honestly. Of, I'm kind of more for Cripper, but okay. Bont too. Bont, Bont gets overlooked a lot more. Cripper's already got like, one. He's got he's one. He has. a good year. I feel bad. <laughs> nah, the Bont is the best player in the comp to not have a brown low. And if he doesn't win a brown low this year, then dare I say it, he never will. Mm. Be cool, but uh, you, you could be right, you know, because he's really on top of it. Mm. It's uh, he was just everywhere on uh, uh, what was it Friday night? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. There's nothing he can't do. Mm. He's got that size, the athleticism, the clean ball use. Mm. He can hit the scoreboard, and because of his height, he can drift forward and take a mark. Take the mark. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Like seriously, this guy can, and he kicks freakish goals too. Not even just simple ones. Like he, he is. He is the package. I know I'm saying this as an Essence supporter <laughs> who has the package on his team, but this guy is the real package. You know what I mean? He's not I'm like. Not well, you used to have the My package. He used to have the package. They used to have the package, and now you've got the package, and they've got the package. Oh, the package. Australia Post. Australia Post is right, completely yes, cool messed enough. up now. They've put the wrong labels on things. <laughs> we've got. We've got. The, we haven't got. Was it Kmart Dusty? We've got <laughs> Kmart Bontempelli um, <coughs> when it comes to the package. But, no, honestly. <laughs> it, it, the, it. the package it has been diverted. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> you're unbelievable. <laughs> uh, can, we, can we talk? Can we, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to bash the frauds. I want, I wanted, oh, the I, Yeah, I wanted okay. to talk about the frauds. Like, okay, that's your asshole of the week? Yes. <laughs> my asshole of the week of the frauds. asshole of the frauds. week last week as well? I know, but they... <laughs> but, ongoing but, theme. Did, well, but, did they play uh, uh, away again last week? No, no, they played at home last yeah, week. They, they lost to the Lions. Lions. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, but that's, that's tough. But this one, tough. this was their chance. It this was. was a golden opportunity. So many people tipped the Suns, and I reckon... The Suns tipped themselves as well mm. and thought it was they were going to get it done. Um, they were even playing with Mac Andrew, having him play forward, which looked really incredible. I've got to say, Mac Andrew is just a walking cheat code. Uh, they've had an incredible run. They've played West Coast twice. They've played North twice. They've played Richmond twice, and they still won't make finals. This was a golden opportunity for them, and the Eagles just wanted it more. They genuinely just harassed them. They never gave up. They were so physical, and Jack Darling is going to be my hero of the week, uh, my legend of the week. I'm not, I'm not giving it to the Bombers, even though in my heart, you guys know, they're my legends in my heart. <laughs> but my official legend of the week is going to be Jack Darling. I can't believe I've spoken shit about this guy, but he has actually come out of the woodwork and had an absolutely unbelievable game. I would have given him a 10 out of 10 performance if he kicked that last quarter goal, but he missed it. So I'll give him a 9.5 out of 10. But other than that, he had an absolutely unbelievable game and the Eagles just, it was so much fun to watch. Listen, I think it's safe to say you cannot sleep on the Eagles anymore. They're no. just, and you know what I like about the way that they play is that they're not playing for a flag. They're just taking every game on, and that's, it's fun to watch. I think yep. it's good. I think it's great. I think they're building a, a really good team. It's going to be really hard to beat in the future. Correct. Yeah. If they can hold on to Harley Reid. Because Harley he Reid will. also had some had some great moments. Yeah, the, some of these clean pickups, and w I think the thing about Harley Reid is that we always think of the brutality in terms of busting the tackles and the fend offs and things like that. But for me, what really stood out stood out to me in that game was his poise. Is because he knows he's strong, he knows he can fend off if he needs to. So he just sort of picks the balls up and almost Pendlebury style, just waits a bit, and the traffic just seems to dissipate around him. Everyone's sort of anticipating him to move with the ball. He was just hold on to the ball for a second. Things open up and then he hits the nice handball on the out. So he, I was really impressed with him. He is he does um bro he does he's still prone to tantrums. Of course. He's a kid. <laughs> so, um, he's a young he's a kid. He's still gotta, you he's suspended still gotta him. work on that. I know we did. You guys suspended <laughs> <We> him. Suspended <laughs> him. <laughs> By the way, Twinkle Toes, I saw it again from Patty Cripps. He this, did yes. it and he missed. 
Only one can twinkle toes. I'm only one. Jesse Please Hogan. Stop it. <laughs> is he winning the Coleman, Jesse? Oh, um, he he's in the running. He's in the he's leading for the Coleman now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's all on the toes, but he's the only one. <laughs> the, the twinkle toes. It is. We do, I went and watched the game the other week, and it was yep. just like, we, cause being Melbourne supporters, obviously we had him for a time and, yes, you know, yes. nurtured and did, went through all the drama. It was drama, all you guys. All it was the drama, all Melbourne. All the drama. And he had that staccato run up, mm-hmm. and we, well, it was a bit weird. And he, could, he, he couldn't kick over about 35 metres. He yeah. really had a short kick. He's developed so well, and I think it's the twinkle toes. Yeah. He's got a little couple more steps in there. Yeah. No worries, dobbing them from 50. And I'm okay with that. I said this a few weeks ago, but I hate that the other players now are trying to do it <laughs> and they're missing. Stop. It looks stupid. Just stop it, please. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Correct. I don't like it. <laughs> no, he's, he's, I think he's kicking bags of five or four goals every week for the last oh. few weeks. And Charlie Kerno went real quiet. Mm. Charlie Kerno pulled a disappearing act, the magician act, and didn't score any goals feel, in a clutch game against the Pies. Yeah, mm. I feel bad for Charlie Kerno though. Why? He's won uh, two Coleman's. No, I mean this season, or not even in this season. I think it's like a, the Blues supporters are just they're an interesting <laughs> breed, and when they lose, they just it's like the guillotine comes out, and it's like anybody who's in the line just get them and cut their head off. And this week, Charlie Kernow's copping it where you're not key. You know, it's a whole team effort. <laughs> it can't Correct. just be Charlie's fault. It's like the first game in ha- in how many games where he hasn't kicked the goal. Like, yeah, geez, like, the guy is human. What do you, you know? want from him? <laughs> they clearly want. 66 games, I think it was. His head. I think, it was, games. Uh, I think it was 66 games. He kept, in a row. Hey, look, quick, get the phone out. Google. <laughs> 66 games that he it, has. He always kicked a goal. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. You know, you, Shame can't, on you him. can't get Sack mad him. at the, well, like, the last... he kicked one goal, they won. <laughs> everybody gets so reactionary, you know. It's You're like, right. relax. Do you it's one him. game. It's because the Blues supporters are feeling the pressure. <laughs> the Blues supporters yeah. know, crap, we're eighth and we are barely percentage away yeah. from falling out. You're two points ahead of us on nine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and only a game behind the Hawks. Who they play this week. Ooh. Oh, this is you unbelievable. You know what, though? I'm going to say this in defense. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm no, gonna I can't believe this. I'm going to say in defense of the Blues. No. Yeah. On Pendle's 400th game, <laughs> it's a tough, it's a really tough team to play. They're just, Collingwood have a value system. <laughs> they were not going to lose to anybody that day if they could help it. I just, that was a tough, that was probably one of their toughest They games. were losing to them if Mitch McGovern didn't shit the bed. Right, but... That, that was a very gettable set shot on goal. I know, but... I love it how we say Collingwood will refuse to lose. Yeah. They had nothing to do with that last shot. That yeah, was I over. Know, but, but, but uh, first of all, if you heard the, the noise <laughs> for that, before that kid went to kick, yeah. just the sound coming from the stands, like there was so much booing, there was so much screaming, there was so much screeching. I don't know if anybody would have made that shot. People did not want that thing going through. It was a lot of noise. It's got to get to you. It's got to. Knowing what you know and hearing all that, there's no, it's tough. In the end, it didn't even come close. That was nah. <laughs> such a mongrel of a uh, kick. It was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Botched it and some. Yeah, but you know what? That's the rest of his team's fault because they didn't score. <laughs> It's not one goal. They passed it forward and then he had not the shot. One goal. It was literally that one goal. It was, but that's not – the game isn't won and lost with one goal. I'm not oh. saying he lost them the game, <laughs> well, but he didn't win like them the game. He didn't win them the game. He didn't that's win right. them no, the game. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. And he had it's every taller, opportunity. It's a tall order. I reckon if he, was, if he really wasn't up to it and he was full grabbing the head and everything like that, I thought, you smart, smart man. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, oh, my head hurts. Concussion. <laughs> Give me a concussion yeah. test. Charlie, where are you? <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> take the kick for me. I can't do it. Well, he couldn't even give it to Charlie. Charlie wasn't scoring. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe it, he might have. It would have given him a chance for his 67 goal yeah, straight. True. 67 goal straight. Game. Uh, game yeah. straight. Game and exactly. goal. Exactly. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I, I honestly thought he was going to take the kick and then he took the kick and I think all Carlton 
supporters, Look, but she didn't. The it's, end only, it's only one game. It just so happens this season, it puts them, you know, five positions lower on the ladder. <laughs> and that's just the sucky part if you're a supporter of the season is that it's unstable, but yeah. it's one game. They just need to play better next week, and we'll see what happens. I don't know if the Hawks are going to win that, to be honest. I don't know if, I, if I'm a... I believe in their future, but I don't know about this season. Are they a flag hawk? I don't know. Hey, they they should have beat the Giants. But they, they didn't. They look like a finals hawk. They look like a finals hawk. You know, yeah, the I last agree. few weeks and, and a bit of maturity, they, they would have had that game against the Giants. Correct. But, uh, yeah, Carlton, are they scarred? You know, I don't know. Is Mitch, what's, you know, how are they going <laughs> to pull back from that? You know, could have beaten Collingwood, upset the Pendles 400. Yeah, yeah. I but, mean, that's a tough game. The, the, just the everything in the air in the stadium. I mean, there were so many Collingwood supporters that came out for that game. They were so into it. And that song was hilarious. I loved that song. It was hilarious. Such a cringy song. (laughs) Pendlebury. Come on, it's funny. Come on. Don't ruin. Don't ruin a great song. (laughs) Let It Be is one of the all-time greats. I get Pendlebury (laughs) is an all-time great in football. I can see where the links are there and the the syllables and things like that. (laughs) But, like, come on, guys. That was pretty cringe, I got to say. Then they they kept belting it out. Just leave it amongst yourselves like in the in the in the change room i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> when they were laughing about that and like your wine's too expensive pendlebury like that was pretty good i'll give them that but then actually going out onto the ground and actually playing yeah. it was just like bring back meatloaf um uh, yeah my point was though that there was a lot there was a lot in that game it wasn't just an ordinary football game so anything can happen in those games you just don't know true but i just want things to be equal i just want all the people <laughs> that bash the Bombers for having their collapse to have their turn to have their collapse be bashed as well. Because I think they're given, as you said, this is such a crazy season. It's a crazy season. And no one had the Bombers making the eight. But you got other teams like the Blues, who people had finishing, making it to the granny perhaps, or being a top four lock. And you got teams like the Swans, who have been nigh unbeatable. And people, all they can talk about is, wow, that's shocking. No, don't just talk about the shock. Actually be critical. They're so quick to be critical about, you know, like a big supporter base like Essen, for example, knowing that it's going to get clicks from the supporter base. But everyone has their turn to be crap. Yeah, actually, that's my asshole of the week. So this brings me to asshole of the week. And I actually like this asshole. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) interesting. But this week I thought he said something stupid. So David King. Yes. Uh, said that um, all the reason why the Swans are in their slump is because the players are being selfish. Interesting. And I actually think that's a really silly thing to say. I, I, I think slumps are not caused by that. That slump is, is more about being down on how you're playing mm. um, than it is about being selfish about your stats. I mean, I'm not seeing that from them. I'm just seeing, I'm seeing a mental issue. For sure. But I'm not seeing an ego issue at all. So, as a, it's just not a, I don't think it was an intuitive thing to say. Well, I think it was just pure sensationalism. I thought, yeah. I thought that was his. Uh, well, King is yeah, a bit it like, like that. Yeah, it sounded like something King would say, to be honest with you. Maybe he's spending too much time with King. That was about to say. <laughs> Get on a different show, King. I was about to say. <laughs> maybe he's trying to give his best King Corns <laughs> impersonation. <laughs> Want to yeah. knock him off the throne, you know? It's like the, with the oh. king's gambit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was. I thought it was weird for him to say that. I just, I'm not getting those feels at all from the swans. So, what are you saying? <laughs> it's just a weird thing to say. But a, a little bit of kudos has to be given to Port. Um, obviously, you can't control who you play. You can't control what sort of condition they come into play with. But the most important thing is that you handle your business yeah. and you take what they give you. And they took it and they ran. Pedal to the middle, didn't stop. This was a real statement win. And whilst obviously this is not the swans that we've come to know throughout, throughout the course of the season, this was a rare opportunity to get them. And mm. Port did not let that opportunity slip. And that, I think, has been one of the big problems with Port Adelaide over the last few seasons. They've made it to the dance in the prelims. They've made it, they've finished top four multiple times, but they haven't been able to capitalize and take advantage of their opportunities. This could potentially be a window into their psyche 
that this is a different Port Adelaide team this year. Mm. Well, I think ruthless <laughs> they yeah. were, you know, and they're not they're renowned not for their ruthlessness, no, you know, and it'll be interesting about this week on what team turns up, but they just put the Swans away, mm. you know, and that's a, obviously top of the ladder. Are they playing for Hinkley though? Good I question. Mean, I mean, since people have called for his head, they've just got their shit together. They have. Mm. So maybe that's what they're playing for. And that's a pretty noble – that's a noble thing. Bevo's the same. Yeah. A yeah, lot of people true. are going to go for Bevo, myself included. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll wear that. I'll wear that. Um, but mainly because of super coach reason, stuff you, Bevo. <laughs> but, um, but in terms of the performance, though, like his, his job was also being called into question. Mm -hmm. The Bulldogs weren't performing as well as they – have clearly shown that they can play mm. and now they are. And so it's possible for, yeah. for teams to galvanise behind their coach. And I think mm. that with Hinkley there was a real threat of him losing his job. I, I think that threat was probably very real. Yep. I think they were crying for it pretty early because yeah. they, they didn't, they didn't do they a good start. been reactionary and, yeah. and sooking after one game. I can't. Mm. It's been really in, the roller coaster has been crazy. But, but um, yeah, I feel like... I feel like that was a real threat, though, because it wasn't mm. one game with Port. It was kind of like a little bit of a bumpy ride. Oh, they're a bit wishy-washy to, yeah. to start and the and season. And it was a good team. They're talented. Everyone mm. thought they were going to start off way better than yeah. they did. Yeah. So I think uh, I think the players don't want to lose their coach. Well, obviously, um, it, it, you know, they they they're putting their uh, you know their money where their mouth is, and they want the coach because yeah. so clearly hasn't lost the players. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and because. With all due respect, poor Adelaide supporters can be quite feral, maybe I don't might know. be the word. Like I'm saying that about every um, team now. <laughs> but they are pretty brutal, the, the poor Adelaide supporters. Mm. And um, they made it very obvious and very well known to Ken Hinckley that they don't like him as a coach. And mm. They would be sticking up on the Alberton sign on the way into the club, either FU Hinckley or Sack Ken Hinckley or something like that. Like, a little on the nose, right? They're very obvious in terms of their dislike for this coach. Um, but for him to continue fronting, him getting booed off the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. You yeah, know what I mean? The the that was yeah. the end, That is right? messed up. Mm -hmm. Like booing your coach off the field. We booed our players off the field. That I, <laughs> They deserved it, okay? <laughs> but booing your coach off the field is also very interesting. Um, and look look where they are now. I doubt, I doubt a single person would boo Ken Hinkley at this moment. Not they after a well, while. They, they certainly weren't booing on uh, the weekend, were they? Yeah, they can't. Right. They can't. Yeah. Haters be hating. But, mm. hey, this weekend is the new weekend. Yeah. Let's That's true. That's cool. true. Who's so, Port, who are Port Point? Well, we'll talk to you. Yeah, the you D's. Never yeah, you never know with the you D's. Never know. Well, we've got a half-injured team, I think. You know, well. So they're... they're the injury is no you know, excuse. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> but they're wheeling Gorney out, you know. That's uh, oh, uh, yeah, no, well, oh, God. Captain Courageous. Yeah, a bit too much for his own good, I think. But um, anyway. Wait, um, curiosity. Do you think that Melbourne need to make some big changes at the end of this season? Oh, I think there will be some big changes. Uh, you you know, think it's like called for? It's what? Called for. Uh, look... I, I think they 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 haven't utilised what they've had in the uh, the reserves. They haven't. They've used a lot of the the younger guys, the smaller guys, mm. but they haven't given any of the bigger guys a go. There's a, um, we got Fullerton from Brisbane Lions, twenty five, played forty odd games. How he wasn't named against us was why, why, unbelievable. Why aren't you giving him a crack? But it worked yeah. in the end. The guys won. Yeah, and we oh, well, crack. you know, um, it rained and we got soggy. Yeah, well, we <laughs> weren't renowned for a wet weather team. It, uh, they just turned up that night. So sorry about that. But anyway, sorry, not sorry. Uh, um, that, but, that was understood. But yeah, I don't know. Look, it's a bit hard to know. Goodwin's a funny one. He's um, he has his favourites and keeps sticks with them, whether they're injured or not. Yeah. You're right. You're still good. Still good. Yeah, I get mean, out there. The Petrarca thing was crazy. Oh, and I actually think the Stephen May thing was crazy. I don't think he should have went back into a game with broken ribs. Like, what was it? Two weeks later, he broke his yep. ribs and went back. Yep. Like, just let the guy heal. Yep. I, even if he wants to play. Since yeah. your lungs are under there, like why would you do that? Well, Harrison Petty came back two weeks too early. 
He was yeah. uh, came out on a dodgy foot, and, you know, got two touches for the day or something ridiculous. Yeah. It's uh, just Melbourne players mm. not believe in science or something or medical. <laughs> well, I don't think we have a doctor. <laughs> you know, like, do you oh. has anybody had any injection oh. over there at Melbourne oh. for COVID or the flu? Oh. Pretty sure Liam Jones had to sit out for that. <laughs> Surprised your club hasn't either with the way you guys refuse to follow mm. medical advice. Well, we're always seemed like we're rocking up for scans, but nothing happens, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but yeah, I look. I, I think they're playing injured players, and I, mm. they goody does tend to do that. You see, mm. and um, I just don't agree with it. Me either. You know, get them right. You know, yeah. well, like Corny, he's always going to say, "I'll play. I'm fine. Right, I'm fine. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to do it." Captain Courageous. Exactly. But you got to think about the future. Stop, Corny. He's 32, so yeah, there ain't a lot of fear. You know. Yeah. Actually, no. Don't stop. My super coach team still requires you, <laughs> and I'm out of, and I'm out of trades oh. completely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Corny, stay on. Corny, please stay on. <laughs> please, Corny, please. Um, but. You you mentioned the book right off the top. Yep. Um, it is going to be launched over here. Yeah, Yay. at the Bolo uh, next Sunday at uh, 3 p.m. We're going to do a bit of a read for the, um, uh, you know, intro characters and story. Um, and because it's a scrook, it's, uh, it's a bit different. It's a, a hybrid script book. Uh, so script dialogue, book narration. Excellent. And a couple of original songs linked by QR codes. Oh, fine. A full sensory package oh, um but the package. yeah what? a package what? coming back to the package Qu- question what yes. inspired you to write a book and why did you include any foot footy at all in the storyline well the story's one thing about swindling the lotto and i've just had an idea of how you could do that over the years mm. but i i wanted to incorporate my surroundings they have a game of bowls they come mm. to the club you know, uh, they they visit a couple of bars. They visit the um, uh, the ESPY, uh, St Kilda Sights and Sounds. So wanted to use what I know. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm. I like it. But, Not uh, making any statement about lotteries in the AFL at all. <laughs> no, no, no. Just manipulating it. The D's haven't had a win for a while, so I thought, oh, we'll get the get the D's a win. Um, but it's always that thing where you, if you're taking someone to a game of footy for their first time, yep. like uh, the Australian detective takes the New York detective, and all of a sudden everybody around them going first game, first game, you know, and then all of course everyone's imparting wisdom and you know and the whole ball thing and stuff like that. So incorporated all of that, as That's I say, fun. stuff I know, stuff I love. Yeah. And uh, look, footy, uh, Melbourne is footy. Yeah. It is I fox agree. and wolf, ladies and gentlemen. By of course a G over here. So if you are. Not too far away from the St Kilda Sports Club, from the Bolo, as you love to say, on Sunday the 11th, 11th yeah. this Sunday of August. This Sunday, come down. Come yeah. on down. Yeah. Have a good time. Have a read of the Scrook. AG is royalty over here. It is going to be an absolute jam-packed party. Dare I say it? And would love you all to be here. Thank you so much, AG, for coming on. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Uh, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you yeah, Anna. it's been great. Um, always love talking footy. Me too. Good luck for your days this week. <laughs> yeah, I good luck. Yeah, oh, like well, I'm, you know, do I tip him? Well, you know, yes. it's like I'm one off the top. One off the leaderboard for the uh, the bolo uh, uh, tipping comp. Oh really? So yeah, oh, maybe oh, not. yeah, I don't know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually I- 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 perfect. Exactly right. He clearly knows maybe what not. he's talking about, guys. So make sure you stay tuned. Head on over to the tips video because that's where we're going to do our tips. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, AG. We had a good time today, Anna. We did, yeah. And we're going to give our tips. Don't listen to Anna's tips. They're not quite as good as mine. <laughs> but... My tips are terrible. <laughs> but you should but listen good... so you know how to not tip. Exactly. <laughs> but we have a good time Do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if you're new, like, subscribe, notification bell, rate us on the Spotify as well, and make sure you tell your friends and family that we have a good time here and we have a proper footy chat. We'll see you in the tipping video. Bye. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>